a boat and its crew disappear. Police are baffled. Seem like they just vanished into thin air. But a stranger thinks she knows what happened. And all of a sudden, I had this impelling feeling that something was trying to come through. It was like she was seeking a message from the sea. But will that message come in time to save lives? What's your emergency? I'm worried about my son. He and a friend are on a boat trip to Florida. Bill Sillenberg calls Delaware State Police to file a missing persons report. His son Lee is on a three-day boat trip with his friends Bill Bonds and Frank Abel. The boat's radio has gone silent somewhere along the East Coast. I started thinking we don't have the luxury to wait around. The state police and the Coast Guard quickly mobilize a search. We immediately put out an APB uh, to all states and local law enforcement as well. The boat could be anywhere in this immediate area here. There was a storm in the area, and they thought there was a possibility that we might have a tragedy on our hands. Let's get out there. With the clock ticking, state police launch a search along the Delaware River. Pulled out all the stops, they brought out rescue boats on the river and helicopters to conduct the searches, even used canine along the uh, banks of the river to see if we could find any trace of them. There were no life preservers, there were no gas cans, there was nothing that would indicate that there had been a tragic uh, accident. There's no evidence of a shipwreck, maybe because there wasn't one. Well, with missing persons, cases we have to consider that people may have disappeared on purpose the marine police stay on high alert and officer scott kleckner continues the search on land i wanted to find out if they had any reason to run away so i wanted to do some background history on them and contact their friends or families but kleckner can't find any reason why they would take off i checked the arrest reports accident logs the local hospitals even the morgue. But there's no sign of the missing crew. But then a tip comes in that could solve this mystery. Two of the crew, Sillenberg and Bonds, have been spotted on shore at a Wilmington bar. I responded to the bar. I went to the state police. I'm doing a follow up on a missing persons case. And I talked to a waitress who did recall chatting with the two guys. The other night, yeah, they sat down there at the other end of the bar. Uh, the waitress tells Kleckner that the men docked their boat in Wilmington, Delaware, and then came in for dinner. She indicated that they left around closing time. She hadn't seen them since. But she says that Sillenberg and Bonds were in the bar before the storm hit, and that they had planned to get back on their boat. Whatever happened to Sillenberg and Bonds after they left that bar is a mystery. It's been more than 48 hours since the men disappeared. And as the clock ticks, the chances of finding them alive are fading. The story of the missing crew makes front page news in Wilmington, Delaware. And it attracts an unusual reader, Nancy Meyer. She sees more than words, headlines, and photos. I was just reading the newspaper. And all of a sudden, I had this impelling feeling that something was trying to come through. Meyer is a psychic who has helped police solve crimes for over 30 years. I have an awareness of things coming into my body first. It feels like I've been sort of politely thumped. It'll move from a physical sensation to a visual image that I can then look at and see what's happening. The psychic reads the newspaper story, and it takes on a life of its own. On this particular case, it was Lee Sillenberg's name. That's what set off a chain of, of images. I see the black 
The psychic sees survivors, but will anyone believe her in time? Lee Sillenberg, Bill Bonds, and Frank Abel have disappeared during a boat trip. Psychic Nancy Meyer is gripped by a vision of what happened on board that boat. The overall sense that I had was this man would be the one that would definitely survive. He could get to shore. The psychic sees a survivor in dire need of help, but will anyone believe her? I decided the most practical thing to do was call the reporter at the news journal and see if I could get him to listen. Got a call from Nancy Meyer saying, I read your article, and uh, I'm a psychic. <laughs> and uh, I think I know what happened. I was certainly trying to be an objective reporter, but at the same time was, was very skeptical. Uh -huh. But what she says next makes the reporter much less skeptical. The psychic knows something about the Sillenberg family, something hidden. I thought... They had nearly lost a child before, and I, I was sensing very high fevers and, and a terrible illness. The reporter is stunned. Lee Sillenberg's yes. father had told him. My, my other son, Ray, almost died of romantic fever. But that information never made it into the newspaper. She just hid details that only somebody who had a gift would know. You in one hour then, bye. He immediately arranges a face-to-face -face meeting with Nancy Meyer and brings her pictures of the missing men. You said you might be able to get a clearer vision of yeah, what would happen uh, if you had some pictures to look at. I remember seeing Lee's photo. Just really nice-looking all-American kid. Meyer looks at the pictures, and a flood of images wash over her. Face, face, I'm just like... He's got a hold of something big and yellow, like a bright yellow color. She said Bill Bonds came ashore holding something yellow. She's giving me this very, very detailed and very, very vivid description of what she thinks transpired. This would be a marvelous story if this guy, you know, somehow was found and he's alive and she's predicted it. But if Bonds is still alive, where is he? And what about Sillenberg and Abel? Helicopters and rescue boats are in their third day of a massive manhunt. And just when they're getting ready to give up, they spot something. Lo and behold, Bill Bonds turned up alive on the riverbanks. Bonds slips in and out of consciousness, and he can't tell police what happened on the boat. He's rushed to the hospital, barely clinging to life. The survivor's story makes front page news in Wilmington, but it has special meaning for one reporter. I asked police, did he have something yellow? Yes, he did. Bill Bonds came ashore with a yellow sleeping bag. So that got me, that, that gets you starting thinking, hmm. Bonds is alive. Maybe his shipmates are too. There's not a moment to lose. We needed more answers. We needed to find out the location of that boat, and we needed to know if there were any more survivors. They now have a smaller, more targeted search area. We called out our search and rescue boats, and we went up and down the Delaware River. And after hours of searching, there is reason to hope. 
There was something right in the water where we were that looked like it might have been part of the boat. Is this the break they need to find the missing crew? Missing boater Bill Bonds has survived a shipwreck at sea, but what about the rest of the crew? Search and rescue teams have spotted something on the river. From far away, it was hard to tell. It looked like it could have been part of a boat or evidence of the craft that had gone down at the scene. We checked for evidence of the wreck, uh, parts of the boat. We even sent down rescue divers in the event that the men were beneath us. When the divers came up, we realized that there was nothing at the scene. There was no sign of the two men. Uh, it was just some driftwood and some flotsam floating at the scene. I was disappointed that we, we didn't locate anything. Just a false alarm. But there is one other possibility. Three men went out on that boat, but only Bill Bonds came back. Does he know more than he's telling? In my line of work, I don't have the luxury of taking anything for granted, and I've been a cop long enough to know that you can't rule anything out. Upon finding Bonds, our next priority was to find out what happened to that boat and where Sillenberg and Abel are. They questioned Bonds about what really happened. Bill Bonds knew that the storm come up from out of nowhere, but he didn't really know what happened to his, his two companions. All he knew that Lee was struggling to, to keep that boat afloat, and that when uh, it flipped over, survival was the first thing on his mind, and he was getting out. Bond says he can't remember what happened when the boat went down. And without evidence that contradicts him, police have to take his word for it, at least for now. Police begin to fear that the mystery of what happened will stay in the murky water forever. But reporter Charles Farrell won't give up on finding the truth. I called the state police to say, you know, here's this person who says she's a psychic, and here are some details she's providing. I have never had any problem with psychics, never. And it was agreed upon that we needed all the assistance we could. We wanted to find the ship, and we wanted to make a thorough search to see whether or not we could find any other survivors. Pharrell sets up a meeting with the psychic and the detective. It was time to say, Okay, you got your shot. We'll, we'll give you this shot. I knew that to get a greater amount of detail, I was going to have to get closer to the river. I could feel a steady pull sensation, like somebody's grabbed the front of my shirt. And the closer to the edge of the water we're able to get, the stronger it's getting. Well, there's a steady pull. From this direction down here, like a distance out, it's it's well out from the shore and down that way. No, it was like she was seeking a, a message from the sea. There was like a chill, and then suddenly this, I could almost like the temperature dropped a couple of degrees, and it got a little colder outside. And you could just feel almost the environment change. I feel like if you go right out past those markers and head almost to the middle of that channel, that's where the boat is. We're going to find Frank's body on that boat because he went down with that boat. Search teams race to the spot where Nancy Myers says the boat will be found. So we put the grappling hook down. That was the moment of truth for a lot of people. Sure enough, there the boat was at the bottom of the Delaware River. Right 
where she had pointed. And in the wheelhouse of the boat he had captained, divers find the body of Frank Abel. As things were unfolding and you knew that this was not an ordinary story, this was not an ordinary woman, how could she know? She has some sort of gift, or she has some sort of talent. But there is still one more mystery left to solve. Where is Lee Sillenberg? The psychic focuses on finding the missing man. disappointed because I knew he was dead. He got tangled in something, rope or cable, big fat thing, wound around his leg and pulled him under. Could you show us on the, uh, on the map just where you think he might be? OK, right, right in here. Right at the mouth of this, this Apoquinimic River, that's where I think he's going to be found. There at the little lower. There's just one right problem. The... the mouth of the river is upstream from where the boat was found. That means that Sillenberg's body somehow traveled against the current. But is this possible? I'm really sensing that that's where the boat flipped down that way. Psychic Nancy Meyer has led searchers to a missing boat and the body of Frank Abel. Meyer also says the remaining crew member, Lee Sillenberg, has drowned. So he was like out of the wreck, clear of the wreck, swimming well, and something caught him around the leg, and it just pulled him under. Meyer says Sillenberg's body will be found at the mouth of the Apoquinimic River. But that seems unlikely. The mouth of the river is upstream from where the boat was found. And I'm thinking, well, that's probably going to be wrong then, because how could a body go upstream when it's not alive? That can't happen. But investigators are willing to follow the psychic's intuition one more time. You know, she told us where that boat was. So if we believe that she had the insight to tell us where that boat was, we would have to accept her reasoning. We searched all day, but as the hours passed, there was no sign of Lee Sillenberg's body. After all the man hours, I, I was starting to wonder if maybe we kind of lost our minds a little bit searching where a psychic had told us we'd find Sillenberg. But just as they were about to give up, they find something. Got a body. How's that? Sure enough, a body. a body had been spotted right at the mouth of the Apoquinimink River. If it turned out the body was identified as Lee Sillenberg. There were people who said, that the body's not going to be there. Currents don't work that way. For it to turn up right where it did, I think it was just amazing. And we'll never know how it happened. We just know that it did. And there's a reason Sillenberg didn't make it to shore. When we found Lee's body, there was marks on his left leg that indicated that he at one time had been wrapped either with a cable or a line. And Nancy said that that cable or that line had wrapped around his leg and uh, pulled him down. It was just uh, one of those 
times in your career where you realize the difference that you've made. We might not be able to explain it or how she gets it, or I don't even know if she can explain where she gets it or where the talent comes from, but it was certainly there. We had nothing concrete to go on. We knew that there was a, a vessel out there on the water, but we didn't know where. And then when you get Nancy involved, then she says, there. She proved herself. She hit a home run as far as I was concerned.